I praise and thank God for this beautiful opportunity that God has given us to come in His presence before His precious Word. For this morning's meditation, let's turn to Proverbs chapter 30, verse 33. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. So the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. Here we can see the calm way with which the Spirit of the Lord is teaching us to deal with our life. The scripture says, Churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of nose bringeth forth blood. We can see that milk which does not have life in it needs to be churned if something better has to come from it. And when churned, it bringeth forth butter which is much useful to us. But when we harm our body which has life in it, that is to wring the nose, it brings forth blood which is unhealthy to the body. And more harmful is the forcing of wrath that affects both the soul and spirit as it brings forth strife. We know that the omniscient God is the best teacher in this whole universe who teaches us the valuable rules of life through simple things which we can easily understand. Even when Lord Jesus taught us heavenly mysteries, which our small brain can never comprehend, the Lord used parables and examples from the environment around us, so that it is easy for us to relate to that subject and understand it in a much better way. But remember that the Lord always reminded man that he who has an ear let him hear. It is true that every man upon this earth has ears, but only few you use it to hear the voice of the Lord and are blessed by them. Here the scripture first tells us about the good thing that comes from the milk when it is churned. And then it diverts our attention towards our body that has life in it and that responds accordingly when it is punched. If we punch the nose of a dead human being, it will have no reaction. The life that is in an object makes some difference in its reaction. And so is stirring up of anger that produces a fight. Man is a living soul and the response is much different from others when it is instigated. We all know that every person who has ever lived upon this earth except Lord Jesus Christ are born sinners. There have come some good teachers who have given people better advice to be overcomers over their sinful nature. But no one can be categorized as holy as they all are born from the first man, Adam. Now we are not looking into the birth of the life of Lord Jesus Christ, which is unique from all others that were that have been born on this earth, but we are looking into the sinful nature that rules every soul that has entered into this world. When Adam sinned, sin took control of the soul and spirit of man and polluted it with its lustful, sinful desires. And as man is devoid of spiritual life that he had while he was having that intimate relationship with God, and walked in the ways that pleased the Lord. The sinful desires in him always looks for an opportunity to bring forth its fruit and subdue him. As man does not have the strength to resist the temptations of his sinful flesh, he always falls into it and that takes away the peace of his heart as his conscience gives him that guilty feeling of his sinful deeds. Even though everyone looks so calm and quiet outwardly, as they try to control their fleshly desires by their strength, sometimes a small spark is enough to ignite the lifeless, deadly things that lie deep down in our hearts and minds. And so the Spirit of the Lord warns us that stirring up anger brings forth strife. Sometimes a small word or deed is enough to start a fire that cannot be quenched. It will change the whole atmosphere of peace into a war zone. And sometimes that strife will last for generations that destroys many lives and those sweet relations. 
If the Spirit of the Lord warns the Old Testament children to be careful, not to stir up anger, then how much careful we need to be as the saved ones who are set free from the bondage of sin. We need to be free from the works of the flesh and at the same time we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We need to check our life in the light of the word of God and find the areas where we need to grow in the spirit and be overcomers. As Holy Spirit God is dwelling in us, our life must bear the fruits of the spirit as we grow spiritually. We must reckon ourselves dead to sin and must not allow its lust to have control over our members as it had earlier before we were saved through Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes the enemy will try to provoke us through others so that we will be bound to react. But we need to ask wisdom from the Lord as to how we need to react in every situation. Let not our words or deeds be the spark that destroys the peace of others' lives and instigate them to do wicked things. Let us be cautious to spread the sweet odor of the divine life in this wicked world through our lives. Let us learn from our Father in heaven, who never reacts according to the evil nature of mankind. We mankind try to provoke God's anger in all possible ways, walking in all unpleasing ways that holy God hates yet patiently with extreme forbearance, a Heavenly Father loves us and cares for us. If we are given one hour to look after this world, then we will burn everything into ashes and we will think of creating a new earth that will be better and perfect one which is obedient to its Creator. Just like the scripture warns us, let us lay our hand upon our mouth and be busy with the task that God has entrusted us. Let the small, like the small creatures which we have learned in the past days, let us be overcomers in Christ so that our life brings forth the beauty of God's presence in this evil and wicked world. May the Lord help each one of us for that. Let us pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for this beautiful opportunity. Thank you for your word. Lord, help us, Lord, to grow spiritually so that we are overcomers in every sphere of our life. The old man, the carnal nature is there in us. Our enemy dwells within us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to make sure that we grow, we feed on your word and be strong so that your name is glorified through our lives. Thank you, Lord. We give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. May God bless each one of us. Our Lord is coming very soon. Maranatha.